This is the kingdom of the White Lion, a 700 hectare private wildlife sanctuary run by Kevin Richardson. It's home to some of Africa's most dangerous and rarest predators, lions, hyenas, and two black leopards. Kevin originally helped to set up the kingdom in 2005 for the production of a fictional movie following the story of a white lion. The retired stars of the film now live out their days here, alongside some of Kevin's favorite lions from his former job at another lion park. The feeding of the animals, vets' bills, and general maintenance cost up to $20,000 a month, all paid for by a private investor. But now the funding is running low, and Kevin needs to find a way for the park to become self-sufficient. If he can't, all the animals could be sold. I've made a promise to them, I made a commitment to them. So at the first hurdle, I'm not going to waver and just throw in the towel. It's far too easy. For Kevin, finding a way for the kingdom to contribute to the conservation of lions is crucial. One day he hopes to open it to the public and give educational tours. It's the day after Big King Rafiki's operation, and Kevin heads over to check up on him. The cubs have tried their best to pull off Rafiki's bandages, but with no luck. There we go. There we go. Now, you can have some now they do need to be removed. Kevin has two choices. Put the lion through another risky anesthetic. It's all flop on each other. Or chance taking the bandages off himself. Kevin's insight into the pride dynamics is crucial in judging the right time. Pick the wrong moment, and he will be at the mercy of over 210 kilograms of angry lion. He's in a much better mood. He's recovered quite well. And he's a lot less grumpy than he was yesterday. Eh? And I think, well, he's in a great mood. I'm going to try and take his bandages off. If I can cut through the whole length of it, he'll be able to pull it off himself. One of the really cool things about having a relationship with a lion is that if there's anything that you need to look at or inspect, it's quite easy to do it without having to put them under. I can look at a little wound, I can say, okay, well that doesn't really need any treatment. I can try and get the bandages off his paw, then have to re-knock uh, him out again. That flicking, it's, I'm really irritated with you. Okay, got it. With Rafiki on the road to recovery, no one is prepared for the shocking events about to unfold in another lion pride. The next morning brings heartbreaking news. Lion cub Vietzi is alone and distressed in his enclosure. There's been a tragic discovery. The dead body of Vietzi's best friend, Mufumu. Vietzi, who grew up with Mufumu, is now desperately craving attention. For the last five weeks, the two cubs had lived in a pride with three older lions, Tristan, Zippo, and Nash, following their successful introduction. Um, yeah, when I got here, all the lions were around Mufumo's body. And uh, what was quite disturbing is when I got there is that um, his um, the stomach area had been opened up. 
So it looked like they had been feeding on him. Yesterday he seemed fine. Um, just before I went, I went home. So he wasn't. He definitely wasn't sick. But he's, he's a little bit scared. But um, I've just phoned Kevin as well to let him know what has happened, and uh, he's uh, on his way here. The discovery is a shock. Rodney fears the three older lions may have attacked and killed Cub Mafumu. For Vietzi's safety, they've been separated and put in another enclosure. As soon as Kevin arrives, it's vital they determine how Mafumu died and whether the older lions were responsible. After hearing the terrible news of Cub Mafumu's death, Kevin has rushed to the kingdom. He wants to know if there are any clues that may reveal if the cub was killed by the older lions, Tristan, Zippo, and Nash. Although Mafumu and Vietzi had lived apparently happily with the pride for over a month, introducing new lions always carries a risk. Even if it's done as carefully as possible, violent attacks can still happen. There's no evidence to suggest a fight, eh? If he was in a fight, anyway, they're going to kill this guy in the neck immediately, a, a mm. suffocating bite, mm. Mm. while the others rip him apart. Mm. If you look here, there's absolutely no puncture wounds. No, there's nothing. Nothing in the neck. On his back legs, where they normally bite them, nothing. When lions attack, they claw and bite their prey from behind, pulling it to the ground. A suffocating bite then closes the victim's airways. On the neck, on the face, look at his face. Mm. His face is perfect. There's not even a mark on his face. And the other thing that's not adding up is that, you know, when, you, when I got the call, I, I immediately had, uh, thought of Ayetzi. I immediately mm. thought this is Vietzi's being killed. Mm. If it was to, an altercation with them, because this guy was more confident, he was more sociable. Vietzi was a little bit more skittish and, and, and a little bit more terrified, you know. And they mm. obviously hone in on that kind of, wow. you know. You know what I'm thinking? Mm. Tongue does look a bit swollen. I'm thinking Pafeda. Tongue swells up, he can't breathe. The puff adder is a highly venomous snake. One bite on the throat could be enough to asphyxiate a young lion. And that's what Kevin believes happened to Mafumu. Don't even know what to say. I think what we need to do is maybe today just bury the body. No. It's likely that once Mafumu died, the older lions began to investigate the carcass and tear it open. The truth be known is that it does happen. Uh, it happens in the wild and it does happen in captivity too. But if an animal does die, sometimes, you know, they, they do tuck into it and they do start to consume it. And sometimes once their carcass opens up, a kind of like feeding instinct and frenzy takes over. Later that day, Mafumu is laid to rest in one of the kingdom's most peaceful areas. Okay, it's early. Kevin is now faced with a dilemma what to do about the remaining cub, Vietzi. As a precaution, for now, he'll have to live on his own. We can kind of give him the attention that he kind of requires at, at, at the age that he is now, but ultimately, he's gonna grow up alone. So we need to seriously think about what to do next. And I don't have the answers at the moment. We're just trying to get over what's what's gone on and what what how to deal with the circumstances